America's security is your security. Buy United States security bonds. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is David Ross, greeting you on behalf of Guest Star, a transcribed feature program brought to you each week by this station and United States security bonds as a public service. Let it serve as a reminder that the finest, safest investment of the whole world today is a security bond. So join your neighbors and invest in America. Today's guest is not an individual, but an entire family, one whose intimate life has for the past 16 years been of intense interest to virtually every radio listener in the country. And so it is with genuine pleasure that I introduce to you now the Barbers, created by Carlton E. Morse and known throughout America as One Man's Family. Fog has set in over San Francisco Bay and in the Barber House, high up on Sea Cliff, a log fire burns warm in the living room. Mother and Father Barber are quite alone this evening. Henry? Henry, did you hear me speak to you? Hmm? I said... Yes, uh, yes, I heard you. What is it? Oh, I do wish you'd get over that habit of grunting when someone speaks to you. I see, I didn't grunt. I said, what is it? And you see, you don't even know when you do it anymore. Yes, do what? Grunt. Yes. <laughs> Put another log on the fire, will you? Is that what you wanted? Yes, Henry. Getting a little late. Don't you think we ought to be going to bed? Well, it'll be nice to have the fire going when Paul gets home. It's cold out. Uh, he might not be home until all hours. Where is he, anyway? Now, Henry, Paul's a grown man. I don't ask him where he's going. I just thought he might have volunteered the information. Well, he didn't. Yes, yes. Well, it really isn't late. I thought it was only about nine o'clock. Yes. Ten after nine. Oh, we don't want to go to bed at this hour. <laughs> that would be a sign of old age. <laughs> we can't have that. Yeah, I'll put another log on. Oh, I love our fireplace. We've sat here happily now a good many years. Yeah, a little lonely without any of the children around, though. Yes, Henry, it is. But we've much to be thankful for. They're all so close to us and all reasonably happy. And we do have Paul with us still. <laughs> never know when he'll go popping off someplace for weeks at a time. I suppose he'll never settle down. Well, my dear, he has to lead his life as he sees fit. What is it about children these days, Fanny? There's a restlessness about them. We weren't like that. Weren't we? Yes. Yeah. Well, we weren't. Children purpose. We were directed into a channel and we followed it. None of this helter-skelter, vague meandering from one thing to another. I was a boy. If you went to work in the bank, or if you started on a farm, you became a farmer. As a result, you knew where you were going. There was purpose in your life. Purpose, yes, but very often a lot of unhappiness, too. And think of all the frustration that was caused by this directing into a channel. How many of these farm boys probably yearned all their life to be in the city? Now, how many of the city boys wanted the freedom of the country? You can't direct children's lives, Henry. When you do, you're just making prospective patients for a psychiatrist. Yeah, all the psychiatry business. I think they're trying to make us all into a lot of mollycoddles. Why, if my father had ever been to... Uh, a telephone, Yes, yes, I can reach it right here. Hello. Yes, Hazel? Hazel? We're just sitting here talking in front oh, of... Oh, what are they doing? Well, I... Ask her if she'll uh, like to come over. Uh, your mother is talking, so... Tell her we have a nice fire going. Uh, just a minute, Hazel. My dear, I've not yet learned to listen to two conversations at once. I don't know what either of you is saying. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee. Let me talk. Uh, Hazel, here's your mother. <laughs> Hello. Oh, something about not being able to listen to two conversations at once. Well, you can't. <laughs> Yes, well, you know your father. Really? Oh, we're just sitting here talking in front of the fire. No, we're alone. Oh, he's off someplace. Well, now, don't come over and... Oh, that would be fine. We'd love to see him, too. Daniel? <laughs> All right, my dear. See you in a little while. Goodbye. Yeah? Hazel and Daniel are going to drop over for a little. Yeah, she said they just got the children settled for the night and they want to get out of the house for a bit. Oh, by the time they get that brood in bed, they need to get out. <laughs> Poor Hazel. They're just at a trying age. Now, Margaret doesn't give her much trouble. I'm afraid you're a little prejudiced when it comes to Margaret. I'm not prejudiced at all. Why do you say things like that? 
I look upon all my grandchildren in exactly the same way. I'm not unaware of their faults, and at the same time, I try to... Now, Henry, you favor Margaret, and you always have. Why not admit it? Uh, well, Fanny, we'll say no more about it. <laughs> you look just like Binky when he piles. Well, that can't be Hazel and Dan already. Huh? I heard the front door. Hi. It's Paul. We're, we're in here by the fire. Yeah, I'll be right in. Getting in pretty early. Well, this is a cozy little domestic thing. Hi, Mom. Oh, your nose is cold. Hi, Dan. A little chilly, are they? Here, Paul. Get up here by the fire and get warm. Oh, the stool's fine right here. Let me make you a cup of hot coffee. Oh, I'm fine, Mom. Sit still. Well, I'll make someone Hazel and Dan get here. Oh, are they coming over? Yes, Hazel called just before you came in. Said they were going to run over for a minute. <laughs> Probably thought we were lonesome. Nothing of the sort. She said they wanted to get out of the house for a while after getting the children settled. I can't say I blame them. Sometimes those kids are enough to give you the screaming memes. Yes, but children can be a great comfort, too, Paul. Ah, uh, yes, Mom. And as an institution, I think they're here to stay. <laughs> oh, don't be so cynical. Uh, not so cynical. Been with me late this afternoon, you'd have thought I was a pretty public-spirited citizen. I made a speech. Huh? Made a speech? Where? Out at the airport. Why, Paul, why didn't you tell us so we could have heard you? Well, I was nervous enough without having any of the family around. What was the occasion? Oh, it really wasn't a speech. The officials out at the airport got the employees together and asked me to give them a little talk on a payroll savings plan. Well, what did you say? Well, I got up in front of all these people, and my knees were shaking, and from somewhere I heard a voice say, Ladies and gentlemen... A voice? Yes. Yeah. Then I realized it was me talking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had the same experience once at a stockbroker's banquet. They called on me for a few remarks. For the first few minutes, the voice that came out didn't seem to have any connection with me. Then I seemed to grow very calm, and I found that I, I was enjoying it. <laughs> they, then they couldn't get you to sit down. <laughs> I, I got to be a pretty good speaker. All it takes is a little experience, and then you get confidence. Well, you can have it. To me, it's just an ordeal. I remember during the First World War, when you were in France, Paul, I made several talks selling liberty bonds. We were called Minutemen. Remember that, Henry? Yes, Henry. All right, George, now that I think of it, I might have done something in the political field. The fellow in charge told me that I had a natural aptitude for public speaking. And before long, they were calling us. Henry, you've told us about that ten dozen times. Don't you want to hear what Paul said? Uh, oh, certainly. I wasn't aware that I repeated myself so often. Well, not at all, Dad. And you people certainly did a wonderful job selling liberty bonds and victory bonds in the last war. I hope we can do as well now in peacetime selling security bonds. Is that what your talk was about? Yeah. The idea now is to get employees to set aside so much each month from his paycheck until enough money is accumulated to buy a bond. Once he signs up, it's all automatic. Money is set aside by the employer and the bonds are... Bought in the employee's name and delivered to him at regular intervals. Uh, sounds like a fine way to save money. It is. Not only that, but the increasing value of the bonds actually increases the employee's take-home pay. Uh, what do you mean, the increasing value of the bond for? Well, security bonds are profitable, Mom. For every $3 invested a day, you get back $4 when the bonds mature. Well, that's good interest these days. Yeah. But to me, the important thing is that an investment in security bonds is an investment in America. You become a stockholder in the United States. And you're providing for your own security as well as that of your country. Did you tell them all this in your speech? Oh, sure. After I got warmed up, as Dad said, I went on at a great rate. And it's easy to get enthusiastic about something you really believe in. Well, you may not be a good public speaker, but you do have a persuasive way when you get started on something. Well... <laughs> Don't tell me I've sold you on the idea, Mom. Of course you have, but I'm not an employee. Ah, I have something else for people like you and Dad, said he, whipping out his perspective. <laughs> oh, Paul. Oh, and uh, remember, America's security is your security. Buy United States security bonds. That's the way I ended my speech. To thundering applause. Why, I think that's a wonderful slogan. Why don't you... Oh, that must be Hazel and Dan. Who's there? When did you get home? Hi, people. Are you frozen? Well, it's not exactly warm, Al. How are you, Muddy? Uh, glad to see you. No, no, don't get up, Polly. Look at you, Paul. That brings the wayward son home so early. How are you, Dan? Got room enough there? Oh, this is fine. Well, we didn't expect to find you here. Oh, I just blew in a bit ago. Paul has been telling us about his speech. 
feet. Mm. Paul, I don't believe it. A lot of things you don't know about your brother, young lady. Well, I'll believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Children all tucked in for the nighty? Oh, yes. It seems to be getting harder to get them settled down the older they get. I thought when they got to the age of reason, it'd be simple. Now I'm beginning to wonder if there is such a thing as an age of reason. If uh, if my wife sounds a little bitter, it's because we had a little difficulty with Margaret just before we left. Margaret? Well, mm -hmm. she's not an unreasonable child. Well, I don't think you'd have been very proud of her tonight, Father. What's she up to? Oh, just a silly argument over what dress she was going to wear to school tomorrow. Would you think a child of her age would be so clothes conscious? Well, I think women are born clothes conscious. It's natural for little girls to want to look pretty. Well, it's all right for them to want to look pretty, but when they start wanting to wear their best dress to school, I draw the line. Maybe she's got a bow. Margaret? Why not? Well, you know, Hazel, Paul may have something in it. Why, she's only a little girl. Ridiculous. Okay, okay, I just threw it in, but don't say I didn't warn you. What are you trying to do? Worry, Hazel? <laughs> he doesn't worry me, Mother. I don't pay any attention to him. Say, I want to hear about this speech. Yes, what about that? Well, Paul made a speech out the airport to the employees to get them to buy you. What kind of bonds, Paul? Security bonds. You know, Daniel, those bonds would be a fine thing for you and Hazel to be putting aside for the children's education. Why, well, they're just like a cash reserve with an added factor of profit. You can always cash them in an emergency... But in the meantime, they're drawing interest. Yes, I've been thinking about something like that. If you want to go about it systematically, you can arrange with your bank to use the bond a month plan. They take care of the purchase and deduct it from your account. Well, that's different than the employee's plan that you made this speech about, isn't it? Yes. The payroll savings plan is an installment buying proposition. In Dan's case, he'd be buying the bond outright. How much do the bonds cost, Paul? Oh, you can buy them for as little as $18.75. You know, I... I was just sitting here thinking how wonderful this country is. Here's an opportunity for people to invest in their country. Democracy in action. Nobody telling you you have to do this or that. It's presented as an opportunity. And people respond because they have faith. Because they want to provide for their own security and for the security of their country. We're pretty fortunate, all right. Paul, tell Hazel and Daniel that slogan you used in your speech. Well, what was that, Mom? Oh, you know, about uh, America's security is... Um, oh, what was it, Henry? Oh, you mean America's security is your security? Yes. Well, oh, that's wonderful. I was just saying to Paul, you came in, that he ought to send that into the government so they could use it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea, Mom. Hmm? Well, what's the joke? Well, it just so happens I got the slogan from a fact sheet sent out by the government. Oh. <laughs> well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? And have you think your son wasn't brilliant? And now the secret's out. You aren't. Well, wait a minute. I'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, One Man Family. It was a delight to have you with us on Guest Star. You have been listening to the transcribed feature, Guest Star, presented weekly by United States Security Bonds and this station. Our special thanks to Carlton E. Morse, creator of One Man Family, for bringing this splendid program to us. Our thanks, too, to the players, who are, to a considerable degree, the individuals they portray. Father Barber, played by J. Anthony Smythe. Mother Barber, played by Minetta Ellen. Paul, played by Michael Raffetto. Hazel, played by Bernice Berwin. And Dan, played by Russell Thorson. So join us again next week, won't you, when there'll be another fine guest star program. And meanwhile, this is David Roth, bidding you goodbye with the suggestion that you can assure your family of a secure future if you invest regularly in United States security bonds.